Thank you. Welcome to NorCal EMS uh, Field Care Audit Run Review. Today's date is May 12th, 2015. Thank you, Mr. Lane. I had to think about that for a second. So the first case that we'll be discussing is an 84-year-old woman who had a syncopal episode and decreased heart rate. They went code three, unresponsive uh, female, along with fire. They arrived at a private residence to be greeted by fire and directed to the patient in the living room. Uh, she was being lifted, assisted onto the bedside commode by the family. Always a uh, touching moment. Patient uh, presented or resented, uh, whoops, little typo there, awake, alert, pale, cool, not diaphoretic, however. Patient's family said she had suddenly become altered and unresponsive at 1330 while sitting in the chair. So she had to have, to have something globally happen to have a syncopal episode while you're sitting in a chair. Um, family members giving her some nitro in an attempt to arouse the patient. That's always kind of fun. Part of the uh, family, she was unresponsive for about five minutes. And then she was uh, responsive, but confused. Probably because after they gave her the nitroglycerin, her blood pressure went from uh, 80 or 90 systolic down to nothing, practically. So she has a history of an irregular heartbeat, uh, legally blind and the family provided the list of medicines that was not in the PCR uh, completely. This makes life entertaining. Patient is uh, primarily Spanish speaking. She's pale, cool, dry to the touch. Uh, she's a learned oriented times person and place. Family says she's normally able to answer all questions, so she's altered. You make the assumption that family is bilingual in translating. Patient denies any chest pain, shortness of breath, nausea, vomiting, or dizziness. Patient denies any other complaints or symptoms. They appropriately did a stroke evaluation, which was negative. And of note is she's got a heart rate in the 30s. No palpable radial blood pressure. So. With a heart rate in the 30s, what's going through your mind? Is this a sinus? Probably not. It's some sort of escape rhythm. Third degree heart block. So they tried to get a blood pressure. EKG will be coming up. They said they thought she was in a junctional rhythm. Uh, she did want to be transported, which was good. Uh, she was supine with an increase in blood pressure, but no change in her heart rate. They did a 12 lead, O2 per nasal cannula. Interesting is I see more and more provider agencies fortunately going with the American Heart Guidelines of putting these people in nasal cannulas with two to four liters and not necessarily always putting them on non-rebreather. We didn't have a well, we'll get to there. IV was a 16 gauge. Why? Because you can. For an 84 year old. So you get two liters in at 30 seconds. Right. She, you know, they started what they started. Glucose was good. They were already given some atropine. Probably won't work, but what the hell? Um, intermittent increase and increase in blood pressure. Again, to continue to deny other chief complaints or shortness of breath. EKG was an AFib, and we'll show you that. Uh, okay. So, here's my pet peeve. Patients list of meds left at the bedside. Fortunately, there was that list included. Now, she's on Cardival, Didge, 
Um, not a great combination sometimes. And interestingly enough, she's also on Coumadin. So she probably is an AFib. And um, she's also got elevated cholesterol. The fin uh, phenofibrate is a cholesterol agent, so is Lipitor. She's on chronic Imdor, so that's nitrates. So, physical exam, she's a little confused, so am I normally. Um, negative stroke assessment, they did do the pupils that were reactive, which was great. Um, head and face, no asymmetry. Lungs, unremarkable. Extremities, good. So here's her vital signs. The initial SpO2 was on room air, I do remember that. But she's got a heart rate in the 30s. Nice low blood pressure. When they get her pulse rate up to about 63 after the atropine, her blood pressure normalizes. Can you go back one? Sure. So for 30 minutes at least, according to that, mm -hmm. she's running at a heart rate of less than Lance Armstrong's normal heart rate when he was at 100%. This is a four-year-old person. Mm -hmm. so 31 minutes, according to this, with a heart rate that's a third of what it probably should be. For this probably. Now I'm thinking she's talking to him not too bad. She's talking to him with everything. Yeah, I'm sorry. <laughs> probably on ditch uh, toxic too, which is probably what happened to her. But but from the time that they originally took her vital signs, thirteen uh, thirteen forty five. I mean, it took them thirty minutes to figure out they need to give atropine. Correct. Or was there no treatment done between the first vital that she they had a heart rate a low heart rate to. Uh, the the last final time. Um, it took them about a half an hour to uh, figure out they needed to give her some atropine. Wow. Okay. Uh, the other thing that I would have done early on is gotten the pacer out too. Well, I, it's hard to say whether they did that or not. They could have said they threw her on the pacer, but didn't put or you know did pace it. That would be in the narrative. But I mean, you would you would think they would do something within the thirty minutes from the first heart rate of that one. Like, okay, what should we do? I mean, were they debating it, you know, for that long or, or what? Yeah, um, I don't know. So here's the first. For those of you who can see it, the first. Rhythm strips. I don't see any definitive P waves. Um, again, here's a 12 lead. It's a dark one, I apologize. Bless you. I mean, she's got downward sloping T waves, which is classic for Dig. Here's another rhythm strip. I don't know whether I would call this a fib, but I would call this an escape beat, escape rhythm. Yeah, it probably is junctional. And why? Mm-hmm. I'm surprised she doesn't have any PVCs. So. Here's another 12 lead. Definitely not a rhythm that I, <clears throat> that I would want. So. You think she overdosed on her ditch? I think she overdosed on her ditch. Take it twice, maybe? Mm, I think her kidney function probably went down. Oh, okay. <clears throat> and I think she got ditch toxic. So I think the documentation's fair. Quality of the care, I... With a heart rate that low, they should have done something. So, right, they, they dawdled. They, 
I don't remember how long it took. What did they have a time for their IV? Yeah, they did. It, it, the IV and the atropine happened late, almost 30 minutes. It could have been that they were just, they were just intimidated to try to pace a conscious person. Well, it doesn't show that they paced. Okay, well, you know, do we want to <clears throat> sedate them? We want, you know, what do you want to do? And they were debate for that long. Say, oh, well, let's give them atropine. Was there attempts? You well, I know, but he's probably waiting. For but yeah, time. did he have multiple attempts or anything? One attempt. Got his first one. pop. Eighteen and sixteen. Sixteen in the AC. So it wasn't a difficult IV stick. So it wasn't like he couldn't <clears> find him. Right. If you could stick a sixteen in the AC, there had to be easy IV at a twenty or better anything. Right. So uh. I'm concerned that it took him so long to, to intervene. That's too slow of a heart rate, too long for an 84 year old female. Right. Or any 84 year old, any. That patient should have either had atropine right away as soon as they got an IV, or they should have been paced. And if it hurt the patient, then get the IV and then give them the percent so they don't remember. Right. So I, I think the care was. Slow. Slow. Uncomfortably slow. I agree. If I was CQI, I'd be getting stuck. Now, okay, good. Second case, chest pain. Arrived at the scene to find a patient in a recliner complaining of chest pain. Pain's dull, achy, radiates through his left arm. Uh, started about 30 minutes prior to EMS arrival. A uh, patient's wife, who usually does tell the whole story, says he's been having chest pain on and off all day. Denies any shortness of breath. He's calm, appears irritable. Uh, pink, warm, and dry, lungs are clear. Cardiac monitor does confirm a STEMI. IV, nitro, aspirin, morphine, and Zofran. Okay, I have a question back up there. Did, did they need the 15 liters? No, they did not. Even with a STEMI. Excellent point, Mr. Lane. The oxygen via non rebreather at 15 liters per minute should have been at 2 liters per nasal cannula. And the new books, the new EMT books are even coming out with NRVs, non rebreather math, starting at 8. And most of them are going 8 to 12, and oh. they're forgetting that 15. So, I mean, God, if you were going to give them a non rebreather because that's what you start with something. Was, remember, that was always half in every book. It was just automatically. Well, there's... Of course, the AHA says that's wrong. It, it should be very interesting when the AHA comes out with the new guidelines. Because now it's going to be a huge training thing, because for the, how many class? Eight years, it's always high flow to 15 liters. Now we're bringing that. Right. Period. This person's um, on HOMO2. He's got everything. Interestingly enough, he's on a beta blocker, so it, should be, it really makes his um, EKG interesting. Ian, he has quite a number of medical issues real insufficiency, diabetes, high cholesterol, high blood pressure. Um, initially, blood pressure a little high. Okay, wait a minute, back up one. Uh, he's on oxygen at two liters, so therefore, go next. How can he have 97% <laughs> on room air when he's on O2? But that's what I wanted to know. Okay, maybe he wasn't wearing. He might not have been wearing maybe it. Maybe two liters at night, or when he thinks he needs it, or he has. Or whatever, right? Else, but he wasn't on it. Well, he has sleep apnea. So if he, but if he's at ninety-seven percent on room air, even if I wouldn't have put him on a non-rebreather. Um, there we go. So an EKG tells them that they're having a stem before they even put the probe. Mm-hmm. The monitor. That? You shouldn't do that. 
Christ saw an SD elevation in Luke 2. I understand. So they go straight to calf. But here's his uh, 12 lead. It's not a uh, 12 lead that I necessarily would want. He's got big time inferior changes with reciprocal changes um, anterior. Uh, Fubar, yeah, um, I agree. And here's his uh, lateral, just his lateral leads. That's not a pretty sight. So I think the care was reasonably good. Documentation was good. Overall impression, I think, is okay. They worked much more um, expeditiously. All right now, the interesting thing is there are some lenses who are not with STEMIs, these are short transport times again, are not recommending nitro. Because if they're, if they're not had nitro before, you can really bomb their pressure out, particularly the right-sided infarct. Yeah, I've heard that. Um, when the latest I've been going over with our students, because we're just in this area, some of them are, are talking about that they have been told that they have to get a 12 lead before they get any medication, including aspirin. That's crazy. Because their protocol says whenever possible, 12 leads should be performed prior to getting any medication. And that means even oxygen. Because you might change your 12 lead. Congratulations, you're probably changed, but you're treating your patient. And trying to figure out which is more important. You treat the patient, not the 12 lead. So, case number three chief complaint of a rapid heart rate in an 86 year old. Uh, code three for this woman with a rapid heart rate. Uh, moderate distress, complaining of a rapid heart rate. They did like to say rapid heart rate multiple times. Um, she was uh, sitting in her bed trying to sleep when she had a sudden onset of this rapid heart rate at about 2100 hours. She denies any associated symptoms with this. Um, not clear. This, that is, she said she was sitting in bed trying to sleep. I don't sleep sitting up. Maybe she does. Well, if she got bad enough cathodes, this is quite possible. So she denies chest pain, shortness of breath, dizziness, nausea, vomiting, numbness, weakness, tingling. Uh, nothing makes the rapid heart rate better or worse. She's had prior episodes. Um, primary vial signs, secondary is noted below, not appropriate abbreviations. Um, they feel that this is an AFib with PVCs with a rate of between 90 and 140. Code to the ED, given radio report, and then transfer to the receiving nurse. That last statement right there, I have an awful lot of my students who come from other places than NorCal. They all say that they use that term at the end of their narrative. Yeah, I don't really like it. All times are, quote, approximate. That's why God invented a watch or a cell phone. Okay, so the medications, interesting, she's on Coumadin. So why is she on Coumadin? She got a DVT? Probably not. PE? Probably not. Um, and maybe for an old DVT, may not. Or she may have AFib chronically. That's a non-valvular issue. So mental status, normal at 2235. Skin is fine. Um, this was a little head face asymmetric smile or droop normal. I'm not quite sure how to interpret that. Uh, her left side was and whole abdomen was distended. So I'm starting to think, hmm, distended abdomen. 
What lives in the abdomen? Hmm. Um, vital signs, initial blood pressure is 138 over 89, pulse rate of 100, respiratory rate of 20, her SpO2 of 94%, her heart rate at one point goes up to 133, with a relatively normal blood pressure. Of note though, is her SpO2 goes down to 90 on low flow, when she was 94% on room air. So does she have cold extremities? Had the oximeter fallen off? I'm not sure. They put her on two liters and give her some normal saline. So here's her 12 lead. She's got a little bit of what? What are you looking at, Mr. Lane? Trying to find out where they get. Oh, I don't. Fit. I, uh, yeah. Other than, other than it might say, no, this is sinus bradycardia. I don't see a fib on this. I mean, to me, that looks pretty, pretty regular. Yeah. Yep. I don't, I don't see anything. Now, they have a little inferior S de depression um, and probably a right bundle branch block. But I don't see a fib. If they're calling this a fib, this is just a crappy baseline. Yeah. So I think their documentation could have been better. I'm not sure if they did that wasn't a lot. Then that wasn't a hundred. That rate was nowhere near a hundred. Right, and I scanned all the rhythm strips that came with the PCR. So this is another one I'm less than enthralled about. So let's go to our fourth case. Chest pain, discomfort. Chest pain was shortness of breath. This started while I was watching TV. More of the story, don't watch the news, it upsets you. Um, he is complaining of some shortness of breath and nausea. Stacy has a history of MI. When asked if the pain was similar, patient replies, he doesn't know. Well, if he doesn't know, who does? Uh, but it does say substernal and heavy, 8 out of a 10 scale, pale, cool, moist. People always with cardiac conditions say trachea midline without JVD. When, I have a question. When was the last time you had JVD? CHF. You can see JVD. I, I have. Um, but trachea midline, it's not a trauma yeah. patient. Yeah, when was the last time you saw trachea? Um, Besides not on the, not on the. Once. Uh, again, pelvis intact and stable, this is not a trauma patient. So the patient was breathing at a rate of 60. That would have gotten my attention. Um, then it says, with coaching, patient's respiratory rate reduced to 18. Um, loaded into the onto the stretcher, into the ambulance. Code 2. I'm not going to fault him for going code 2, but I would have moved a lot, with a, a lot faster with an initial respiratory rate of 60. Is if you ever tried to hyperventilate at 60, you'll pass out. So they gave him... That's okay. One can hope. Nasal cannula, four liters. Blood sugars were normal. They gave an aspirin. Uh, nitro was given. A little bit of decrease of pain. Um, they say the heart rate, heart rhythm changed. Second 12 lead. No uh, orders or questions. Interesting, they're on clonidine. They've had TA, uh, myocardial infarction, and a abdominal aortic aneurysm. Doesn't say anything about it being repaired. So, physical exam at 2115. Mental status is normal. Lungs. Now, 
That's real more descriptive, chest pain, pressure, non-reproducible. I'll give them that. Um, they said GU normal. That's just a lie. That, that's just clicking to, for clicking's sake. If they did a GU exam on this guy, I would be very surprised. So the blood pressure was interesting. Um, 108 over 68, little beta cardiac, respiratory rate got my attention again. I was at 2117, 2132 was in next recorded vital signs and the, the respiratory rate had gone down to 30. And then again, 15 minutes later, the respiratory rate's down to 18. It took me 30 minutes to touch down. Yeah. So here's all the procedures they did. Blood pressure, 2117. Pulse ox at 2117. 2118, cardiac monitor, um, and onward. So, aspirin, nitro, and Zofran. Can you back up one? So they were 2117, finding a chest pain. And then the next one for I chose 33. 33. So 33. Yeah. So that's still 16 minutes. Again, slow care. Here is a rhythm strip, really crappy baseline yet again. So, quality of the care, slow. If you're gonna do include a rhythm strip, make sure it's one that can be read. I understand. In ours, when we're using automatic downloads, pick and choose some of them. Yeah. So, here's a nice trauma for you. Dispatch code three for a vehicle versus pedestrian. Air ambulance requested and dispatched. Fire also dispatched. Trauma team activation, a 23 year old struck by a vehicle going about 35 miles per hour. Now an up and over collision with vehicle. So I'm assuming that the patient went up and over the vehicle. Never a good thing. So he's in full C spun on the north shoulder of the road. Honda CRV. I'm not sure why that's important. Vehicle is a vehicle, unless it's a big pickup, and then well. That's why they probably use it. Okay. Fire reported finding patient on the shoulder, alert to verbal and oriented person, place, time, but not event. Put in full spinal immobilization. Uh, this was excellent. They did GCS 13 and they said, and it's only 12, sorry. Just noticed that. Something's wrong. Uh, facial abrasions and lax to lip. I did like the fact that the ears were clear of drainage. Lots of abrasions to the abdomen. Pelvis is stable, non tender to palpation. Um, good description of the abrasions to the posterior hand, left elbow, full thickness puncture wound. Uh, posterior, I'm assuming they're talking about the back, unassessed by EMS due to being in full C-spine. Per the fire, non-tender with any palpable deformities. That's at least nice that they got that. Exactly. So they put him on the stretcher, suctioned his airway, oxygen via non-rebreather, cardiac monitor, and they tried two IVs, one successful, one not. They arrived at the LZ, the crew was there, blood sugar was good, 
patient to the air ambulance with no changes or incidents, patient's ID transported with the flight crew, no further patient contact, and the patient goes to a trauma center. No meds, no allergies. Here's his fine exam, confused, hence the GCS of 13. Head, face, pain, tenderness, abrasion, laceration, where? The, yeah, okay, so he's got abrasions to his face. Where? Um, chest and lungs, some tenderness. Left and right, clear breath sounds, which was good. Abdomen, upper quadrants, tender. And he's moving all extremities. So 1750, the blood pressure is 142 over 80. Heart rate is 72, respiratory rate of 20. And SpO2 on high flow O2. 100%. Uh, full C spine is out of order. That should have been first. Um, airway, they continue to suction. And at 18, 10, 20 minutes, patients loaded. So they were at the scene at 1748, and then they released the patient to the flight crew at 1800. And here's a rhythm, pretty unremarkable. But here's the one, oh, okay. I think the documentation was reasonable. I think the quality of care was reasonable. I didn't say excellent, I said reasonable. Why? Yeah, 16 would have done fine. 18 probably would have done fine. I'm just, I'm wondering if this is an old school medic and traumas always have to be 14 or whether this is traumatically and I'll go back to the station. It's not on me. So, number six is your bonus case. You and your EMS medical director, moi, he had requested to help an employee who was actively seizing in the other part of public health building. You quickly walk through the labyrinth of hallways, and it is a labyrinth, trust me, to an open office space. You arrive to find an office with employees milling about, worried about Gerald. So we get to work. Time is 1316. So, ladies and germs in the audience here and in TV land, this is all you get. Let's work through it. Ask me questions. General impression, you see a heavy set slash obese male uh, sitting in a chair listening to the right. Uh, mental steps. Unresponsive. How was the season? Airway. Um, airway. Interestingly, you should ask about airway. When you look at his um, mouth, and he's kind of got sonorous respirations. He's got a big wad of gum on his lip because he just popped a couple of chiclets in his mouth from the open chiclet um, Tupperware container. So, it's in his mouth? Hmm? It's in his mouth? There's a big wad of gum half in his mouth on his lip and sticking out. First of all, his airway must be cleared. Okay, so what are you going to do? You've got gloves on, reach in and grab the gum and pull it out and put his hand up and reach in and put it inside of the airway and reach in and Okay, I still have all my five fingers from that hand, and that's what I did. I took the gum out of his mouth, and he, when I repositioned him, he was breathing better. He wasn't sonorous anymore. So, he is relatively rigid. When you open his eyes, they are deviated to the left, three millimeters, and rhythmically beating left, right, left, right, left, right, left, right, left, right. And his right upper extremity 
he has a rhythmic movement in his hand. So he's got a partial seizure in his right upper extremity, maybe generalized tonic, clonic, just the clonic part, uh, uh, sorry, the tonic part, um, and the rest of his body. His co-workers know nothing about him. They were already calling 911, and it was a dispatch error, of course. So, I've got gloves on. I've taken the wad of gum out of his mouth. I repositioned his neck and head because he's kind of wedged into the chair, and there's only me and a bunch of other co workers who are just watching. Normally, on, normally when you suspect seizures, you're supposed to get the patient into a position where they will not hurt themselves or fall down or fall. Either recovery position, left lateral, or something out of a chair down on the floor where they won't <coughs> fall or hit their head. Yeah, and I. And basically wait for <coughs> medications that you don't carry in your back pocket. Uh, correct. So. I stand and hold his head and neck to keep his airway open um, because I asked for somebody to help me lower him to the ground. That wasn't forthcoming. Nobody oh, helped him? No, they're, they're like... <laughs> it, yeah, they're all like freaked out. So... I'm surprised you don't carry a little gun. Okay, so it was a long seven minutes. Uh, fire does show up. And so, what do you want to know? Did what? the seizure stop in that seven minutes? Uh, no, they did not. So he's in status epilepticus. He's in status epilepticus. You didn't have your mad device to give him per se. Amazing. The first thing that we do when, this, when the paramedic and the two EMTs show up is the medic starts drawing up Versed in it with a MAD device, and uh, we do a blood glucose, and his glucose is fine. It takes four of us, because he's a big boy, to pick him up and put him down on the ground. So now we have him in the left lateral, the cubitus in the recovery position. So, anybody want to know what his initial vital signs were? 198 over 124. And I'm like, ooh, yeah, cool. So what's running through your mind now? Do you think he's uh, seizing? Do you think he's having a stroke? Do you think he's going to intracranial bleed with his eyes deviating and beating to the left? Yes, you don't have to make that decision. Yep. That's exactly it. So his pulse rate was about 110, his respiratory rate was about 18, and his initial oximetry is now 96%. Yes, when you hold his airway, his tidal volume is fine. Okay, so they squirt the verse set up his nose. Nothing happens. So, you got an IV or an IO? neither. They squirted first set up his nose. By that time, transport was there, and they elected not start an IV on him. I was deliberately standing back and not directing care. I was just because otherwise you would have had to drive to the hospital. Maybe. I probably should have. I did not assume care. I assisted with care. I wanted to see what the crews were going to do. Okay. So, when transport got there, the, the EOA provider, they did put him on the gurney. They never did start an IV. And they whisked him away. So, I called the hospital later that day, and he remained in status epilepticus, had a known seizure disorder, 
uh, was not compliant with his meds, got put on a propofol drip with Ativan for breakthrough seizures and went to the ICU. It was an interesting experience because I had nothing. And the pair of gloves they gave me barely fit onto my hand. So, yeah, because I've got. You're not the, you're not the patient. Like, no, I don't. So, any questions about this case or any of the cases? So, you need a black bag at this Yeah, the hell I do. We can put you together and jump back, can we? Yeah. Anybody yet still out there in TV land? Yeah, we're here. So, here. it was um, a very sobering experience, to say the least. So, that's it. We are finished early. Um, for June's um, Mac, I hope to have the revised release it scene, um, refusal of care, and the spinal mobilization. And I hope to have um, the, at least be able to discuss either the one of the uh, new stroke trials, either Mr. Clean, Extend, or Escape. And we'll work on getting some of the core measures out for further evaluation and, and developing training. Any questions before we uh, close down our uh, field review for the day and the meeting for the day? Juan, well, thank you very much for dialing into our uh, soiree, so to speak. Thank you. Okay, guys. Thanks a lot.